Hello, everyone. So let's start. Uh, is my audio fine? Yes, Professor. OK, great. Thank you. All right, so last lecture we were uh, looking into fully convolutional networks for uh, semantic segmentation. And then we then we discussed how we can use like any standard CNN uh, architecture which we have defined for classification and maybe modify like some of the later layers where we have fully connected layers, just uh, convert them to a uh, fully convolutional using one cross one kernel. And then we can predict these uh, activation maps, which represent uh, the segmentation, which is required. And uh, we can also improve uh, the quality of this uh, segmentation by performing this upsampling and also taking features from intermediate layers. So uh, the prediction from the final layers, uh, which is actually very low resolution, will give you very coarse segmentation. And if you start picking features from some of the earlier layers, then uh, you will get like more finer details, uh, the boundary details are for the segmentation. And then including these features will lead to like these improved boundaries. So here you can see that this is like very coarse level prediction and how the boundary, for example, for this bicycle, it's, it's not even close to bicycle, right? It's just a blob and how it's improving as you uh, include like features from these earlier layers, which is like high resolution when you compare this with the final ones. Okay, so that was the trick. Then we talked about uh, how we can perform this upsampling from a low resolution to high resolution. And there were some simple techniques like nearest neighbor. Then we also discussed bilinear interpolation. Uh, so there was a question, uh, how exactly this is done? So I think Jengta, you were confused. So now uh, is this clear to you? Okay, great. So then we can use this interpolation for uh, upsampling. And then there was a very nice trick for performing max unpooling, which is actually a very cool idea. Uh, what we do is, because in semantic segmentation, you, you'll have this kind of symmetric structure, right? The encoder part, which you use to extract the features. And then the decoder part, where you are going like from the latent feature space to again reconstructing uh, the, segment, uh, the segmentation map at a higher resolution. So the trick was the way you are doing max pooling, just repeat that to perform the upsampling because map max pooling is like selecting from which particular region, like if it's a bigger neighborhood, so which pixel you take the activation from. So this is kind of giving you the fine level uh, localization detail from exactly where in the image you picked that feature. So then in upsampling as well, when you are decoding, you will put back the features to that particular location. So that will help you in like localizing your, your boundaries or your objects uh, when you perform a uh, decoding. So that, that was a nice uh, idea where, and we can use that for max unpooling. You just propagate the values. And then there were some like uh, learning techniques, like instead of just uh, doing upsampling, you learn how to do an upsampling. And that's again using these convolution kernels. So we saw different variations of that. Okay, so this was like a one network where uh, unpooling and this deconvolution uh, layer was used. And we discussed these results. Then this was another network uh, which, which is called SegNet. And this is very popular, uh, not just in semantic segmentation, but if you have to perform any, any uh, task where you need like going from one domain to the other. So it could be your uh, image to image translation, right? For example, you have an input image and you want to draw a sketch of, a sketch of that. So wherever you need uh, that kind of auto encoding, the SegNet kind of a structure is uh, very powerful. Now the difference between this network and uh, the deconvolution network, which we discussed on this slide is made like uh, this convolution operation. So in this case, we are performing a deconvolution and we also discussed like how we are also maintaining the spatial resolution in this deconvolution operations by trimming the padding, the boundaries, just keeping the center region, right? 
So in SegNet, instead of using deconvolution, we just use the normal convolution and we still have this uh, unpooling layer. So for uh, upsampling, we are uh, we are using unpooling. So this is showing like uh, the pooling indice indices transferring from your max pooling to unpooling. And there are some other changes like uh, after con, there's this batch normalization, which has other benefits, but the main difference is this uh, con operation, okay? Then this was another interesting uh, architecture. And so most of the time what we do is we take like a combination of this unit and this segment. So we don't perform this uh, pooling, in, uh, pooling of indices. We just take the features as it is. And we, uh, instead of unpooling, we do this uh, upsampling, right? Using interpolation or maybe just repeating the values. And instead of cropping the input feature space like this, we can actually just take the full feature map here and concat. And that is possible if your resolution of feature maps at this level is same as this. So which is the case for segnet, right? the resolution is same at the corresponding layers. But in unit, since they are not maintaining the resolution as they perform convolution, and that's the reason when they perform upsampling, the, the shape of these activation maps is different from the shape which was in the encoder. So for example, if you look at uh, these uh, subsequent convolution layers, the starting resolution was 284, and since they are not using any padding, so after performing convolution, the resolution is just 282 and again, it re reduces to 280. So, and it's not matching with what you have here, but instead of this, if you were to maintain the resolution and let's say you perform a padding of one. And in that case, what you can do is you can maintain the resolution. So it will be 284 all the way in all these three layers. And after downsampling, when we will come back after upsampling, again, you will get your same resolution back as 284 and then what you have to do is you don't have to perform this cropping you can just directly use the, those features and perform this concatenation here okay so that's the standard like uh, variation uh, which is uh, very highly used okay so the difference between unit and segnet was uh, one difference was instead of uh, unpooling we are just using upsampling the other difference was we are propagating like uh, or using features from the encoding part in the decoder. 